What's up guys, it's Speed here, and today we have something very insane. I mean, this is a huge list of heroes that are going to help you get out of your current bracket. I have a hero for every single bracket. I combine Herald with Guardian, Crusader with Archon, Legend with Ancient, and Divine with Immortal. And for each role in each bracket, I have a hero that you should be playing if you want to get out of your current bracket as soon as possible. So yeah, if you enjoy our videos, like the video right now. Do you guys want to become broken? I mean, uh, that's the goal in Dota 2, right? Become broken. If so, the Game Leap website is 50% off right now. I'm not kidding. 50% off. You're not going to get a better deal than this. So if you want to sign up to the website to get top tier content from people like me, right? Videos that you get on YouTube that are simply exclusive over there. Click the link down below and sign up for GameLeap.com. It's 50% off. Alright, so getting into it, let's start with the Herald and Guardian bracket. For position 1 heroes, this is the only time I'll be mentioning 2 heroes, only because I think these heroes are on a very similar playing field when it comes to viability within these two brackets, and that is Wraith King and Spectre. Now why are these heroes good in low MR games? Well, I would say the main reason is that they're durable. Like, let's be real guys, if you're in this current bracket, what you want to be able to do is scale the late game, right? You want to be able to make it to the end of the match, be tanky, not have to worry about positioning, and be able to just run at people. And that's what Spectre and Wraith King do. They get a lot of items, and then later into the game, they pick a target and run at that target. Even in pro matches, that's how you play these heroes. So, you don't have to have a complex understanding of Wraith King and Spectre to make that work. And that's why you should play them in the position 1 role in Herald and Guardian. For mid laners, you should go for Sniper. Sniper within this bracket has a 54% win rate, going up towards 55% the further you go up. And the reason for that is people are really bad at coordinating ganks and really just coordinating spells in general. And because of this, Sniper thrives. Also, the hero's toolkit is very simple. So like, you kind of just think about Sniper and he just works, right? Once again, he gives you late game scaling, which is what you need in level more brackets. His laning stage is simple but effective. Max shrapnel, throw it up, push the lane. When the game goes past seven minutes, start jungling to get neutral items, start pushing in waves with shrapnel, and that's about it. When a team fight breaks out, TP in, cast shrapnel, if someone's low, assassinate them, and other than that, you're right clicking. Like, it doesn't get better than that, and the hero is gonna win you the majority of your game, so give it a shot. By the way, don't buy ags if you're going mid. For all leaners, you should go for Underlord. The reason for this is, once again, I hate saying the same thing, but the reality is if you guys want my honest opinion, you pick a hero that is easy to execute on. If you're low MMR, you either have some mental blocks that you need to get past, or you're newer to the game. So Underlord makes your game plan simple. Buy aura items, deny creeps and get a lot of last hits, and shove in creep waves. This is how you play Underlord. I'm not kidding. You don't gank, you, at least you don't have to gank. You just chill in your lane, you have a ton of damage, a ton of spells, you're hard to gank, and if at any point in the match, your team is dying and overextending going high ground, you ulti them out. It's the best fail safe in the game for low MMR players who will dive the tier fours 10 minutes in. So just ulti them out, right? Just, just dark rift them to your base and you save them. Also, you buy auras, which also saves them. Also, I know in these brackets for a fact, there's like eight carries per game. You know what's really good with carries? Aura items, because you buff them up. You don't need to be the carry. A lot of people think you need to sell. No, you don't. You can rely on your other carries to come online at some point. They will, everyone does. Just buff them up. Also, Underlord shuts down carries because he reduces base damage. For a position 4, I know this is going to sound weird, but go for Jakiro. The hero within these brackets has a 55% win rate on average, and sure, it's usually picked as a position 5, but understand how these games go. Where you win fights in low MMR games is at towers. If the enemy team is pushing your tower, take the fight. Just take the fight. And Jakiro is really good at that. You walk up and you ulti. If they dive you, which very often they will, they're going to be running through a macro pyre and die. I guarantee it. It's super easy also to hit ice paths on these players that are just running in a straight line at one hero. I know you might not like me for saying that, guys, but just watch the replays. If you don't believe me, maybe at some point I'll do a replay analysis of, I don't know, Jakiro in low armor brackets. Actually, I did do that. I literally did that. There's a video on that. Just go watch it. And finally, for position five, you should pick Ogre Magi. This one, I cannot stress enough. If you're a five player, even four is fine as well. Same thing with, with Jakiro. Pick Ogre. The hero is simple. It just works. It doesn't get you punished. You can make a lot of mistakes and still pull it off. And the hero scales well. That's the great thing about Ogre Magi. On top of that, he's very similar to Underlord. 
What is the strategy of Ogre Matchup? Stun people in the lane, run in, tank damage. What is your goal in the mid game? Run in, tank damage, stun people. Also, when your team has four carries, what do you do? You bloodlust them. And then all of a sudden they can win their 1v1 man fight that is based off absolutely nothing besides a guess that they're gonna scale and carry the game. So bloodlust your carries, stun the enemy carry, and you can even buy a Midas if the game's slowing down. You'll probably win. Next, let's get into the Crusader and Archon bracket. So for a carry within this bracket, you should go for Bloodseeker. The reason for this is that Bloodseeker is very dominant at this current stage as a lot of players are starting to learn how to play high tempo, but you still want to scale to a large extent. On top of that, I would argue that this is the bracket where people are beginning to understand how to really crush the laning stage, right? If you get an advantage, you can run it over. And Bloodseeker is really, really good at that. Bloodrite is one of the best level one spells in the game. You heal yourself up, become fast, you're hard to kill, and Rupture is a really easy spell to use that guarantees you a kill on most heroes. So yeah, if you're playing Bloodseeker, I recommend you go for some sort of Treads, Maelstrom, maybe a Blade Mel if it's a good Blade Mel game, into BKB build, and you can just run around and right clicking people. It's really simple, but very effective. And I think he also, once again, counters a lot of these super hard carries that are gonna be picked at your bracket. You just rupture them up, pop your blade mail or your BKB, and start hitting them. Then you're gonna win most of your games, considering he has, on average, a 55% win rate within these brackets. Coming in at number two, we have Clinks. Now, Clinks, I wouldn't say, you know, he doesn't have the highest win rate within this bracket. It's nothing crazy, right? You're not you're not gonna be blown away, but it's certainly up there, right? Clinks at this bracket has around a 52 to a 53% win rate, which is reasonable, right? That's pretty good for Dota heroes. And the reason why I think he's good in this bracket is if you actually learn and spend the time to learn how to properly play this hero, right? Watch some of Crit's gameplay or any one on Dota 2 Pro Track, just, just watch them game. You really see how they dominate it and copy what they're doing because Guys, let's be real. If you are at this MMR, you're still at the point where people aren't farming that fast, right? They don't buy the right items. They don't buy set items. They don't get tanky. They don't farm fast. So Clinks picks them apart. That's all I really have to say. On top of that, I actually think Clinks is a pretty good hero right now in actually most brackets. For an offlaner, I recommend Night Stalker. And I'm actually a huge fan of this hero. I feel like it's underpicked in general. And it has around a 54% win rate within these brackets, which is very respectable. Now, why do I like Night Stalker? I think it's because the hero is self-sufficient and, once again, this is the point where laning stages are starting to get harder, but they're not that hard. Now, Night Stalker is very easy to lane with. He's tanky, has high HP regen, and his only goal is to secure creeps and deny creeps. That's it. You don't do anything. That's literally all you do. Up until the five minute mark, that's what you're doing. Then at the five minute mark, it's a very smooth transition, right? You have your urn, or your phase boots, or your wand, and you go run at people. It's really simple. And on top of that, Night Stalker scales well, right? He doesn't necessarily farm that fast. You can go the Ags build and farm relatively fast, but you don't farm that fast. That's okay though, because the other people in your bracket, they don't farm that fast. Sorry to say it guys, but they don't. They don't farm that fast. So if you are just on decent GPM as Night Stalker and you're killing people, which is pretty easy to do when they're always buying the wrong items and going glass cannon builds, you're gonna run over to game. I really do believe this. So pick up an Ags, pick up a BKB. You can buy an Abyssal later on. You could buy a pipe if your team needs it. You could go Blade Mail, Vlad's. I have a lot of options, but at the end of the day, go some sort of scaling build. The game will go late and you'll be able to carry from the offlane role. And number four, we have Clockwork. And I think the reason why this hero is good is because people don't really itemize perfectly if you are at this current bracket. I'm sure a lot of players know to go four staff against Clockwork, but you can track them down and get a lot of solo kills. Right? Think about the PA who's rushing Battle Fury. If you play Clockwork, all you gotta do is run at her, and you're gonna solo kill the enemy carry, and then you won the game for your team. If you can do that, it's pretty easy. On top of that, I, I think a lot of people are really bad at dealing with Blade Mail um, in the Crusader slash Archon bracket, so if you pick up a Blade Mail on Clockwork and a Vessel, you're just gonna be able to carry the game from the four roll, because you're gonna reflect a ton of damage, prevent them from healing, and you kind of act as that anti-carry, at least in the mid and late game. In the early game, just solo kill the lions and the shamans that are running rampant. Even Ogre Magi. You actually can bully Ogre Magi, which is cool when you hit level three. And finally, for the five roll in this bracket, I recommend you pick Crystal Maiden. The hero's win rate is pretty high. It's around 53.5 on average. And I, I just like this hero as a five because I think it just makes sense. Uh, you have two nukes and you can farm. That's awesome. So when you're playing Crystal Maiden, here's how I recommend you do it. In the laning stage, buy a lot of clarities, a lot of mangoes, and take your nukes at level 1 and 2. Sometimes you can take your passive at level 2 if you think the lane is a little bit more static, right? That can help your team out overall. 
But you can take your two nukes, buy a lot of mana regen, and then tell your carry to go on a target. When they go on the target, cast your spells and you do so much damage that you can basically kill anyone. It's really, really easy. Then, when the game goes to the mid game and, oh my god, my entire team is jungling, my cores keep jungling, it's fine. What you can do with CM is level your ulti, make some stacks, and take them. Or you can walk up to a lane and farm. Your hero is really, really good at farming in the downtime and will have impact no matter what. On top of that, you scale. Pick up a BKB. Um, and yeah, this is the only five I would recommend, like, potentially rushing a BKB. I know that can sound insane, but if you pop BKB against the right heroes, like PLs and Lycans and uh, Terror Blades and PAs, you can actually do so much damage in a fight. Now let's get into the Legend and Ancient Bracket. For the position one role, I recommend you pick Ricky. This hero's win rate within the Legend and Ancient Bracket is quite insane. His win rate overall is around 54.5%, which is unbelievably high, and I think this stems from a couple of reasons. This is the point in, in Dota where people start to play fast, right? Maybe not that fast, not immortal fast, but still quite fast, right? The game starts to speed up. Get it, speed up? That was a terrible joke. But nonetheless, it starts to speed up, and Ricky is this really nice balance between a good laner and a hero that can play very quickly. On top of that, I think this is also the bracket where a lot of the players start to understand matchups, like what heroes are good against what heroes, how much damage do I do, can I kill someone, should I go for solo kills, like, I really do believe people start to fully understand this around here, I'm not saying you can't understand it in the other brackets, but if you do, you'll probably go up, or you have some other issue that's holding you back. Nonetheless, Ricky is a scaling hero that is very difficult to kill. I don't believe the Legend and Agent brackets are that coordinated yet. They're like getting there, you know what I mean? You'll see like one smoke a game and decent spell casting, but still, Ricky is so hard to kill. And if you pick off the backline supports, which you should know, right? Target priority, I believe most Legend and Ancient players understand it quite well. You should understand who you can burst, and if you burst them, you win the fight. I believe that. For number two, we have Necrophos. I think this hero is just such a dominant laner, and if you are in the Legend and Ancient bracket, you'll have around a 54% win rate, and if you learn how to dominate your lane, you can easily jack this up more towards 60. Why? Because this hero snowballs. It's really the ranged version of Timbersaw, and if you understand how to win your lane, which is not taking your passive at level one and actually casting your nuke properly, and then last hitting and denying, which spirals your passive out of control, you can actually crush the game. On top of that, you work really well with the hyper carries that you're going to see very often, such as the Lunas, the Lycans, the AMs, the Drows, and yeah, you just play a really nice, I don't know, I guess Robin to the Batman sort of hero, and especially if you win the lane, people really tilt. They really, really tilt, and you should understand how to win lane if you are in this bracket. Coming in at number three, we have Beastmaster, and this is an easy one for me because holy, this hero's win rate in the ancient bracket is 58%. How is it 58%? In Legend, it's 55.7, which is still awesome. Like, that is insane, considering in like Herald, Guardian, Crusader, on average, it's 53%, which is still really good. Clearly, this is just a strong meta hero, uh, which is why I made a video on it recently. If you want to play Beastmaster in any bracket, I just made a set video on it. You should check it out. But yeah, in the Legend Ancient bracket, this hero's win rate is sky high. It's insane. So yeah, if you give it a go, all you really have to do is copy one of the builds. You can rush Necro or you can rush Helm of the Dominator, max out your boar and you win a lot of the lanes, which is awesome. On top of that, I think people begin to understand the vision game. So your Hawks really come into play at this bracket, right? You can tell your team to play around your Hawks, get pickoffs and jump the right target. And on top of that, you give your team the ability to Roche. And once again, coordination begins to come into play around these MMRs, right? I really do believe that. So if you can get your team on the right page to take Roche, then smoke and get a pick off into an objective, Beastmaster lets you spiral out of control while also having a hero that continues to scale. Really is the perfect pub hero in those regards. At number four, we have Bounty Hunter. Now Bounty Hunter's win rate isn't insanely high. It's a respectable 52% win rate, but the reason why I like Bounty Hunter in this bracket is I think it's a very obnoxious laner that tilts the heck out of people. On top of that, you scale well, and you can buy the support items that you need from the 4-roll. Also, I genuinely believe if you are friendly enough within these brackets, you can convince people to pick heroes that lane well with Bounty Hunter. While that could be a Necrophos, or you know, even a Bloodseeker offlane, or I don't know, there, there's a lot of options, maybe even Clanks. <laughs> uh, you can pick any of these heroes, and then Bounty Hunter just gets a bunch of levels and runs over the mid game. Also, I really just think scaling heroes work in solo MMR. Um, also, as I said, people learn how to play fast, in these MMRs. Also, the coordination isn't the best. So that's why, I really do believe this, but people learn how to play fast, so your win rate's a little bit higher in the Legend and Ancient. In Herald and, and around those MMRs, it's like 50%, and in Immortal, it's also 50%. 
The reason why I think it's 50% immortal is because people learn how to deal with Bounty, they learn how to group up, pick him off, and uh, really deal with his shenanigans, but it's a little bit harder to do that and synergize within the Legend and Ancient bracket, so I recommend him as a 4 hero. And finally, for 5, we have Venge. Venge has a 52% win rate within these brackets as well, similar to Bounty Hunter, but as of course, if you main these heroes and actually spam them, you can make a 52% win rate hero easily a 55 or 60% win rate hero. You just really have to understand and watch something like Puppy's gameplay, which I also just made a video recently on. So yeah, if you learn how to play this hero, you max out the nuke, and you understand that when you die, you still can go hard, you're gonna stomp the game. I mean, really, that is my favorite part about Venge. This hero is meant to die. Just go die. And you should start to really understand that. I really do believe that, like, Ancient and Up players really do understand that, like, it's good to die as a sport, right? Like, very often you want to die. And because of that, I think Venge does quite well within these brackets, right? You, you you cast your spells, you swap out your teammates who you should be able to identify, right? If they need help, you should be able to swap them out. And you can set up kills. On top of that, you help with Roche. That's awesome. As I said, same reasons for Beastmaster. I'm not going to repeat them again, but Venge helps your team do that. Wave of Terror and stats lets you Roche. And finally, last but not least, and thank you for staying with us, but we have the Divine and Immortal Bracket. For position 1 in this bracket, I recommend you try out Luna. If you don't know what build to go or how to play this hero, you can just watch any of OG or actually a bunch of pro teams are picking it now. This hero really has been exploding within the last month, and that's why I think you should pick it. It also has, on average, a 54% win rate, which is extremely good. This Helm of the Dominator build that people are going right now gives Luna the ability to lane and stay alive in the early game, which she simply couldn't do in the past. The way to beat Luna was killer in the early game. With Helm of the Dominator, that is 10 times harder and I really do believe that this has allowed Luna to just become a dominant carry, only because people figured out this build. Also, people realize that instead of taking the right-click talents, you take the beam talents at level 10 and 15. For a mid laner, I'm gonna recommend Lycan. And I feel like I have to recommend Lycan for the Divine and Immortal Bracket, because in the Herald and Guardian Bracket, Lycan has a 52% win rate. In the Divine and Immortal Bracket, he has a 60% win rate. He's actually the only hero, I believe in Dota right now, that has a 60% win rate in any bracket. And Therefore, I kind of have to put it on the list. You do need to understand that to play Lycan, you do have to have some basic micro skills, right? So if you're not a micro player, well, I hope you can learn it. If you're in Divine and Immortal, you're probably relatively addicted to Dota, so you probably can do that. And, right, you just need to understand when Lycan is good, right? When is this hero good in the drafts? If you pick it at the right time, you stomp. There's so many pros that hate Lycan right now, especially when he was even more buffed than he was right now. I think he had like 65% win rate. Like two patches ago, it was disgusting. If you pick them in the right game, you just win. And it still kind of is like that. You run over the enemy team. You understand at this bracket that Lycan is a farming hero. Really, I believe that's why this hero is trash in low armor games. Because people don't realize Lycan is arguably one of the fastest or the fastest early game farming hero in the game. Maybe behind like Alk, obviously, but that's cheating. But like Lycan farms so fast. Then if you pick your right objectives and learn how to split up the map, right, actually farm aggressively you dumpster, like you dumpster, dumpster, dumpster. On top of that, you have to understand what heroes you can pick off, who you kill, who you need to avoid, how to split up your units. It does become a little bit complicated, but if you figure it out and pick them around the right game, you have a 60% win rate. Coming in at number three, we have Enigma, and I really do think Enigma is great for these top tier brackets. The current build that people are going right now is this Necro 1 build, and it's really funny because Enigma, at every other bracket besides Divine and Immortal, has a sub 52% win rate. It actually goes all the way down to sub 50, at the lowest of MMRs. However, in Immortal, he just has a 55. Like, this is some of the biggest discrepancy in any heroes where, like, usually it's like, oh, 50, 51, 51, 52, 52, or like something like that. Enigma is just bizarre. He just spikes up 5% at the highest MMR. And really, it's because this hero is difficult to play. Once again, people don't always look at Enigma as the farming hero that he is. Enigma is a farming hero. I know it might not seem like it, but he is. So you rush this Necro 1, you have a dominant landing stage, you take all the towers, and you flash farm. Basically, similar to Lycan, you take everything. You are so good at farming. Your hero can easily be a top net worth hero as long as you understand how to lane, and then you scale really, really well. There's no better late game hero than Enigma, at least in the right Enigma game. But yeah, I think that's why this hero does so well. At number four, we have Phoenix, and Phoenix has a 52% win rate in the Divine Slash Immortal bracket. And the reason why I wouldn't recommend Phoenix a little bit lower is because he's hard to play. He just is, right? He's, he's a difficult hero. You have to hit all your fire spirits. You have to know how to disengage, you have to know how to position your egg. Sunray is a bit clunky, right? It's, it's just an awkward hero. But if you understand how to play him and understand what his advantages are in the laning stage, which is trading 1v1, 
right? That's what he's really good at because of fire, spirit, attack speed slow. You can actually solo carry your games, right? This hero farms so fast and does probably the most damage out of any support in the game if you get all your spells off correctly and hit them, which is the hard part. But if you learn how to do it, my gosh, Phoenix is deadly. And finally, the last hero of this entire video for position five is a secret special Actually, almost every pro team is picking it now because Secret started doing it, but that is Bane. This hero's win rate in Divine and Immortal is 55.3%, which is so high, and yeah, this hero's just good. It just does a lot. In the laning stage, you win the lane. Yeah, I mean, you just take Brain Sap and right-click and Brain Sap people. And then mid-game, you just go set up kills. On top of that, what I think people don't realize about Bane, which is probably a large reason why this hero has such a high win rate, is if you try to contest Bane at an outpost at the 10 or 20 minute mark, you're not going to get it, right? He's always going to take the outpost from you and get your team that massive XP lead, right? Reliably, because if two people contest, which is very common for outposts, right? It's so common for people to contest outposts with two, maybe three heroes. You sleep one, grip the other. Boom, you've won the outpost game. Your team gets this massive XP lead and you're off to the races. On top of that, I actually think Bane does require some pretty strong understanding of like saving teammates because you can nightmare save people but it's a bit clunky it's hard it's weird time very very hard time on top of that sleeping people is is a bit of a disaster if your teammates don't synergize well you end up sleeping them because they right click you also have to synergize certain spells with it so that's why this hero its win rate actually falls below 50 percent like it drops hard per bracket Right, so the higher you are, the better Bane is. That's very clear. You can look at the graphs. It goes from like 50, 52, 53, 54, then all the way up to 55. So yeah, that's that's the last hero of this video. And that took a lot of work. So if you guys appreciated this entire video, uh, please do like and subscribe. Help our channel grow. If you want to see more things like this in the future, let me know in the comment section. Also, if you have ideas for videos, you can say them as well. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace. It is currently 50% off to sign up for the Game Leap website. If you're trying to become broken in Dota 2, use the code become broken in the Game Leap website right now for a 50% off discount to get exclusive content from top tier pros like me. The videos are very similar to what you get here on YouTube. So yeah, if you want to become broken and get to the top level of Dota, sign up right now for 50% off.